Hey, everybody. Welcome to our weekly Ecosystem Office Hours call. I am your host, Jinx, and as always, we are joined by the best and brightest in the Pocket Ecosystem. Uh, big day today. We've got some uh, updates uh, about uh, the uh, state of the protocol and Shannon progress and, and all that kind of good stuff. So without further ado, I'm going to turn over the mic to Olshansky to uh, kick that off. I appreciate the handoff, Jinx. Uh, so I'll just uh, kick it off from here. Uh, I think that um, a lot of you are probably wondering about and that I get a lot of questions and see a lot of questions is, uh, what's the update of, what's the status of Shannon? Where are things going? Where are the timelines? Where are the features? Uh, I know there's lots of open questions uh, and the goal is to answer some of those today. Uh, I can tell you, I probably get pinged at least every single day, at least once a day by someone asking how they can help, uh, asking how to get involved, asking when they can get involved. Uh, so the goal is to provide some visibility into it today and not have all the answers uh, straight out of the bat, but at least be able to provide some of the answers, give some insights, uh, and have it be as a starter uh, for future conversations that we're all going to have uh, as an ecosystem together. So uh, that's kind of the background, that's the context. Uh, get pumped for some charts and graphs. All right, so the agenda of what I actually want to cover is uh, first sharing some target timelines for testnet and mainnet. Uh, I know everybody likes timelines. Secondly, and I think this one's actually really important, is showing how the community can get involved. Because our goal is really is to get everybody involved in the development of Shannon as soon as possible. Uh, I genuinely think that we can make this be the biggest, most successful protocol, not just a launch, but upgrade ever. Uh, but not one single entity can do this alone. So I kind of want to share how we're thinking about it uh, to get everybody involved as soon as possible. I am going to share some timeline risks uh, because the goal here is to also be transparent, right? It's not just us presenting what we're doing, but it's presenting what we're thinking and also solving some of these questions together over time. Uh, and then I'll go into next steps and also share some longer term thinking to get everyone excited, but also plant some seeds. So people in the community can start thinking about it themselves. Right, that's the agenda. So without further ado, here are some timelines. And I know it might not be super easy to see. Uh, rest assured that after the call, uh, we're going to take these mermaid diagrams. Uh, we'll upload them to the uh, pocket network documentation. Uh, and you'll be able to see it after the fact as well. Uh, but for now, I'll try to uh, I'll try to work with what we have. Uh, so high-level timelines for testnet and mainnet is to in Q1 get a private testnet and then a public testnet out, where suppliers and gateways from the community can get involved. I'm not going to go through everything here piece by piece, uh, but the idea is that we have a very basic kind of uh, POC in place for Shannon. Uh, we're getting really close to being MVP complete from a basic feature set. And as soon as we have what we have, what we need from a CLI and tooling perspective, we want to get someone, like multiple people from the community running our software, giving us feedback and trying it out. So that's probably going to be happening uh, sometime next month as early as possible. And that's actually going to kick off a public test afterwards. So the target timeline for that is maybe like mid to end March. Uh, but that's when we'll really open up our testnet for everyone to jump in, giving us feedback and figuring out where the missing gaps are. Uh, that is kind of, that is the plan for Q1. And then the plan for Q2 is a lot of things that are going to lead to a target uh, mainnet launch around the end of June. So 
we'll see where it aligns with the cycle, with the crypto cycle. But we really want to make sure that we um, kind of uh, dotted our I's, crossed our T's, added all the features necessary to make Shen really successful, uh, but also make sure that there's uh, there are no risks in the migration process. Uh, make sure that the ecosystem and the community has all the tools they need, uh, and also make sure that we integrate properly uh, across all the different stakeholders are involved, right? From exchanges to node runners to application developers, uh, there's a lot that we really need to take into consideration here. And one of the things that I really want to reiterate is that this can only be possible with community feedback and through community involvement uh, and tight feedback loops. So these are the timelines. Uh, they're kind of aggressive, but also realistic. Uh, the team is working really hard. And I genuinely think that, you know, if we just keep up the momentum that we have right now, uh, this, this is the plan. We'll keep executing on it. And everyone will be amazed by what we achieve by the end of it. So. Those are the main timelines. And if you're joining in late, I just want to reiterate that uh, all of this will be available in our documentation after the fact. Uh, in terms of feature sets, so we are going to be working internally and externally to make sure that the actual features that are launched will be well documented. Uh, but to give everyone an idea, uh, a high level idea of why we're even doing Shannon and what we want to get out on day number one is the permissionless aspect that's really missing in Morse today. Right? We want to make sure gateways are, we want to make sure gateways are permissionless. We want to make sure applications are permissionless. We want to make sure services, uh, which we kind of call chain IDs today are permissionless. We want to extend it to uh, things outside of just Web3 services, but really anything and everything. Um, we want to get IBC interoperability. So right now, RepTalk, uh opened up a lot of doors, but with full-fledged IBC, we can open up even more doors after the fact. So not only are we going to have on-chain gateways that are permissionless, but we'll also have gateways to other opportunities as well. Um, yeah, and of course, there's going to be some quality of life improvements like session rollovers and other things. Uh, and that's kind of going to be, uh, this is kind of what we're planning to have on day number one of Canon. Uh, and it'll, uh, and then we're going to adapt these ideas as things solidify over time. So those are the timelines. These are, those are the target timelines. These are the planned features and Moving forward here, uh, Shannon community involvement is how we're really going to get there. Uh, and this will also be pub uh, available publicly and will also uh, provide a lot more details into every single point that you see on the board here. Uh, but the idea is that we're going to start the way we're starting right now by giving you visibility to what we're thinking when we're thinking of doing the things, giving really rough uh, documentation and visibility into our day-to-day. -day. And we're actually going to bring somebody on board that's going to help facilitate all the conversation and all the questions uh, that you know node runners and other community members have for the protocol team so that we get the ball rolling as fast as possible. Uh, you will see that as the quarter matures, and as uh, other node runners are running the Shannon software, the details here will become much clearer. So for example, uh, we're going to kick off some conversations about tokenomics, right? Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that uh, sometime soon. Uh, we're going to uh, publish some more research or maybe just a documentation on either uh, the pocket network docs or the pocket roll doc. So stay tuned for that. And once we start getting feedback, that's when we'll be able to publish a very specific, here is what the CLI looks like for Shannon. Here's what the open API spec looks like for Shannon. Uh, here is what the Prometheus metrics exporter works like for Shannon. 
And then we can start really integrating into the gateway kit that's out there or into other infrastructure that everyone is building. So those are kind of the first two steps around sharing what we're doing, presenting what we're doing. Um, and once we really get to a public test net, that's when things are going to heat up, right? That's where we're going to have lots of bugs, a ton of back and forth. Uh, maybe, don't quote me on this, maybe there'll be some incentives in place. Um, maybe we'll uh, start bouncing out more work that's going to launch on the first day of Shannon. Maybe we'll be even working with other projects in the ecosystem, right? There's early conversation. Uh, and then I want to make those as I want to make those public and transparent as soon as possible, uh, but not sooner. Uh, but we are planning for all of that to work as closely as possible uh, together. Uh, and the way we're going to do this is I'll participate. The protocol team will, will participate. Uh, you know, other members from Grow will participate. The foundation, uh, and we're also going to be bringing specific individuals to drive these conversations and organize them as needed. Yeah, and of course, at the end, all of this will be one huge, big, uh, exciting launch. So that's kind of uh, insight into how we want to get everybody involved. And, uh, you know, in, in an effort to try and be as transparent with everybody as possible, uh, what could, a common question I get is, what are risks that could delay the timeline? Uh, we did try to account for this in um, in the in the chart that I presented, but you can't. There are always unknown unknowns that happen. Uh, here are the unknowns that we have that we've been thinking about, and if anything else comes up, we'll share with the community. Uh, but this is what I've distilled it to so far, where uh, I'm not too concerned about development. Because bugs always happen. This is common for anyone who's ever written a single line of code. Uh, but we've got a strong team. We've got a strong ecosystem. Pretty sure we can get through these. Uh, missing gaps could be uh, a, a factor here. So, for example, there could be an endpoint on Morse that everybody is using and that we just overlooked because there's so much out there. Um, so we, that could potentially delay timelines a little bit because we'd need to, uh, scope, scope that in for Santa mainnet, or maybe decide that it's something we could add back after, uh, the initial release. Um, depending on whether it goes into the initial release or not will really be a function of the feedback that we're going to get from like, everybody on this call and potentially others who are not. So this is why the community involvement is going to be a key factor in a successful launch. So the first two, I think, are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the third one, key migration, this is going to be a big one. Uh, we've started scoping out this work, uh, but it's still in the early stages. But the whole idea of moving from Morse to Shannon, not just through a minor protocol upgrade, but really a rewrite with lots of new features with a different wire protocol, with a different data schema, is not something a lot of other protocols out there have done. Uh, so I'm actually kind of excited about this because we'll be able to show pretty much the entire industry of what's possible. Uh, but then there are some questions around, do we just want to do a regenesis? Or do we want to bridge from more to channel? Do we want to keep the same, uh, uh, the same cryptographic key scheme? or use a different one. All of this will be documented, uh, all of this will be shared, and we're also working with some, or speaking with some other projects to get their feedback on this as well. So first two aren't too complex. Third one has some open questions that we need to research, uh, but there are a handful of solutions that we've already thought through and or started thinking about. And the fourth one is ecosystem migration. Uh, so I know a lot of uh, the stakeholders, a lot of actually the people on this call, you probably have tooling and scripts and parts and infrastructure around uh, how Morse works today. 
we're going to have to work together to figure out um, how do we make it as backwards compatible, compatible as possible or what kind of tooling we can put together to migrate easily from Morse to Shannon and kind of leave all of the legacy behind. Uh, we'll have to answer lots of questions and kind of literally jump on calls to figure these things out. Um, everything solvable uh, is just a matter of how much this is going to delay the timeline. And this is, again, going to be a function of how closely we all work together to kind of push this, push this over the finish line as we get through those uh, public testnet uh, stages in the launch. Uh, leading up to Shannon. So those are some timeline risks. And I'm going to I'm going to show one more slide and then go into Q&A in case you have any questions. I know that was already a lot of content, uh, but just to give people ideas of what we're thinking around why we're even doing all of this in the first place. So on Shannon uh, main at launch, we want to make everything permissionless, right? That's really how we unlock uh, the power of Pocket Network. Uh, but there's also a lot that we're thinking about, that we were researching, that we prototyped uh, after the fact. So everything from, you know, having WebSockets live on chain, right? Maybe potentially having configurations so that you can advertise what kind of spec your service is supporting or doesn't support. Right. We have started looking into how we can have not just um, relays, uh, relay rewards per chain, but could we just have comp general purpose compute units in general? Uh, there's different ways to approach it. There's no single bullet, but we've already uh, uh, thought through some potential ways of doing it. Later, um, you know, and there's no timelines on these 1.1, 1.2. This is just sharing longer term ideas. It's finally moving the fisherman or the washer on chain. Uh, how, maybe having some features that preserve privacy uh, from the gateway side. And maybe have using ZK for verifying the relays using ZK proofs. These are all kind of conversations that I've had with other projects um, at whether it be at online or at some conferences. But there are a lot of interesting things that we can do maybe especially on the light client side as well. Uh, but these are all kind of TBD and they're structured based on their complexity of integrating it into the protocol. But what I want to show here is that we are thinking about what we can do afterwards and uh, that there is still a ton of new features that can provide real utility in the industry that we can unlock after a successful channel launch. So there's something else I want to show at the end, but before I do so, that was already a lot of content. So I wanted to, wanted to open it up for questions to anyone on the call. If you have a question, don't be shy. Just unmute, jump in and ask. And while we're waiting for some questions to come in, uh, in terms of like handling the communications as we start onboarding uh, suppliers slash node operators or even gateways for Shannon, uh, once we you know onboard the uh, the point of contact to handle all of this, we'll definitely have a Discord channel specific to this. Maybe we'll have a Google Doc where we can start putting um, aggregating all the questions that everyone has. There's different ways to skin the cat. Uh, and we'll probably do a combination of all of them. So now is kind of the time to ask any early preliminary questions, but this is going to be start becoming more of a regular occurrence as the quarter uh, continues. Can I quote, maybe don't quote me on this. Uh, you can quote me reading out your quote is my answer to that. <laughs> Other questions? Jinx. Yeah. 
Well, I just want to say I think this is uh, really clear. So this is <laughs> this is freaking awesome. There is a lot here. So yeah, really uh, really appreciate this. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of content here, a lot to digest. Um, and I think after the fact, once we put this on docs.plug.network, you guys can share it, uh, read through it in your own time, and then post other questions um, online. And yeah, while we're waiting uh, maybe in another minute or so for other questions, I do want to say that I am personally really excited about everything that's happening. Uh, the level of momentum that we have uh, working on Chan right now, I haven't really seen that on any other development teams. And personally, I also know, I've been told by multiple other projects that no one has ever seen uh, such a level of community involvement in other projects. So I know that's uh, a lot of that is happening on Moors, but if we bring that over to Shannon and align that with the momentum that the protocol team has had over the last few months, uh, I'm trying to stay cautiously optimistic, but I am very optimistic about around the level of features that we can ship and kind of show, show everybody how it's done. The last call for uh, questions around those updates. And, and if there are no more questions, uh, there's one other thing that I want to show on the last slide after Q&A. So I'll jump into it, and then if a question comes up, we can go back to questions. Uh, you know, you can't give a Shen update without a fun Shen in fact. So here's a, fu here's a fun Shen in fact for everybody today. Uh, in the early 1950s, uh, Shannon actually built a chess playing machine. So he was, uh, he actually went to the USSR in the 1940s and competed with some of the chess grandmasters and realized he has to build a machine. So he did that. Uh, it was only really good at end games and could only handle six pieces at a time. I found all these little facts very entertaining. Um, but it, it was cool to see that him and Alan Turing were kind of two of the first ones that really wanted to build a, let's call it an AI that was 70 years too early. Nice. So that's it for my end today. Yeah, and hope everybody enjoyed the fun chant. <laughs> Thank all right. Well, thanks for that, Oshansky. We appreciate it. It's nice to have the updates and see how well things are moving along and uh, that uh, our timelines are looking good. Um, we really appreciate uh, uh, y'all com you coming on and uh, taking some time to, to give us that.